Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Insight 2024. We are live in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Streche. You know, Rob, we, we have a lot of conversations here about how companies are trying to figure out how to make the most of their cloud technology. But really, what we're learning here today is that the success depends on how your infrastructure is running. Yeah, and it all has to be about the intelligence of that infrastructure, the intelligent data infrastructure that we've been talking about so far this week. So I think this is a great place to go because Part of that is the visibility, manageability, and how these data services all work, work together. So, to talk about all of that and more, I would like to welcome Haiyan Song. She is the EVP of Cloud Operations here at NetApp. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, and I'm so glad to be part of this and back to theCUBE. Yes, you are an illustrious CUBE alum. <laughs> um, great job on the main stage this morning. I, I, mean, I want to talk to you about how NetApp's approach to intelligent services is evolving to mm -hmm. help customers manage their data and their infrastructure for their entire IT environment. Well, first of all, you mentioned the word intelligence data infrastructure, right? The buzzword that, of the this buzzword conference. The buzzword of this conference, and that's also the vision that we're articulating as we continue to innovate and evolve and expand our portfolio. So, um, some of uh, our customers know that last year, we were here talking about NetApp CloudOps. And the evolution is amazing because it's not just CloudOps, it's not just a standalone portfolio. Now it's really part of the intelligence services. And we don't just think, what do we do with clouds? We think about the entire data infrastructure, multi-cloud, hybrid, and all these great things. And uh, particularly, I'm excited that in the vision of int intelligence data infrastructure, the intelligence services play a key role. Key role to bring the intelligence to the operations of the infrastructure. A key role to get the best value out of the data. And uh, you probably heard us talk about all the new releases, capabilities around ransomware, real time, and um, you know, data recovery for ransomware. That's, sometimes protection is important, recovery is even harder, right? And on the side of infrastructure and workload, uh, working with the most demanding and critical workload requires a lot of infrastructure. Yeah, no, I, I think, again, it, was, it took me back. Your, yeah. your presentation took me back to when I was at NetApp, and I, I think, again, I think you, you on both sides of it, when you look at the ransomware and how AI is enabling it yeah. for, to be uh, protected better, yeah. quicker, yeah. finding, you know, detecting, you know, remediating, pr in protecting all of that, and bringing it all together, but also having the visibility. We called it ML, not AI, back in the day. You know, we're I talking- I remember oh, those oh, days. Yes, <laughs> it's funny how things, things that are old are new again, but I, I think, again, you had some great, I think, things from the stage this morning and where you were talking about how you're looking at optimizing and efficiencies. Why don't you kind of go down that path and what you've announced and how that's really going to help organizations gain that advantage. Yeah. I'll take a very top of mind thing to talk about, right? Uh, we know VM estate is one of the hot topics given all the changes, right, in the industry in that area. And one of the things we did in our latest release of data infrastructure insight, I think you know it, you know the two generations yes. of that product <laughs> uh, from OCI to Cloud Insight. Um, one of the focus is really how do we help customers have a better understanding of their VMware deployment or the VMS state, and how do we give them the intelligence and insight to say, well, how can you just change your deployment, maybe just optimize the count of the host and core so you can save on licensing costs, but that's only one part. I think what's more exciting for me is we're teaming up with the ASAA series team to say not only how to save money, but how do you deploy it in the most optimal way? You can get the best value out of our latest innovation. That's one example of intelligent services truly provide the optimization. There's also a general optimization work we do in the broader portfolio, right? In order to optimize, you got to understand. So having observability 
whether it's for the infrastructure, for the cost of the infrastructure, for the nature of the workload, and coming with open source as well, because that's a new frontier to get all those insights. So we really try to add our infrastructure and workload services portfolio to bring that visibility, bring that intelligence so we can optimize the right infrastructure adapted for the workloads because nothing is static. One thing that's so clear walking around here on the show floor is just how powerful and strong NetApp's ecosystem is. And we know that the ecosystem, the partners are so critical to success. How does your close relationship with cloud partners help you offer better intelligence systems? You know, the, this is so unique for NetApp, right? Because everybody can offer things on the cloud and everybody think, gosh, you know, we can just buy the solutions from different vendors. And that not everybody realized that you already have a lot of your enterprise data that's stored on-prem and, and in great technologies like ONTAP and others. So our partnership with the hyperscalers is so unique that we were able to build those power of ONTAP into cloud, but not as a third party only, and we integrate it into their very native consoles and things. So if a customer have the choice to choose a technology they love and they're familiar with and with all the power, and without having to jump out of what they're familiar with in the cloud console and, and use them. I think that's an example of that tight relationship we have and the value we can bring the customer, the simplicity the transparency, but that's just the beginning. I think, you know, I talked about how AVS, the Azure's uh, VMware Rapid uh, Migration Program, and we're bringing a slew of solution together, right? It's like, or data infrastructure insight for telemetry, or spot eco for reservation management, and uh, really teaming up to help customers on that journey. Yeah, I, I think, again, to me, it was, uh, also punctuated by the fact that you said it's about data, hence the name change and things of that nature where data is at the forefront of what you're talking about. Yeah. Kind of help us understand, because I, I thought that was a great vision that you laid out for people earlier on how it's not just about, you showed what used to be OCI and before that Onero and now <laughs> cloud. <laughs> and so it's gone through all of its different things, which was really great to see that people still can get that visibility. But it's also about, because that's the connections of the data and how the data gets to where it needs to be. Right. I talk about why the name change and data at the forefront there. Yeah, I mean, you heard George, right? We live in the era of data and intelligence and uh, for us, we, you actually had more history on this than, than I do. When it was OCI, people loved it. We still have customers loving it and using it. And we moved it to Cloud Insight as a name. It's really telling customers, now we want to deliver all this greatness from the cloud. But some customers taking the new name and say, hey, do you do on-prem anymore? So we thought, hey, you know, with the whole intelligence data infrastructure vision, why don't we properly match you know, the name with the actions and the value this product already supports. So we support the entire data infrastructure, not only NetApp you know, technology, and what some of customers love is the heterogeneous environment because I don't know any customers who only use one technology solution. So it's important to be holistic and systematic and because when it comes to troubleshooting, you want to know the whole thing. You cannot be siloed and, and that would take forever, right? So the ability to reduce mean time to resolution is a big value that we bring to this. And when it comes to data, I actually use another sort of word to describe how data and infrastructure connect to death is the workloads. And that's why workload intelligence, workload optimization are super cool and important. The infrastructure NetApp does is different from some of the secondary backup solutions is we support and, and the most critical workloads, the most demanding runs on our infrastructure. So having an eye on the workload, optimizing the infrastructure for the workload help you deliver all the value that truly, truly can come out of the best 
data infrastructure. So we're here at NetApp Insight. I'm sure you're having lots of conversations with customers. What are they telling you are their biggest pain points? What's keeping them up at night, especially as they're trying to blend their cloud operations with on-prem systems? Yeah, that uh, definitely we hear, you know, data, we have them everywhere, and, and how do you bring the hybrid together, and, and I think I'm excited, just even on the AI side, when Chris stood up and said, hey, you know, we have intelligent data services to bring the global name space together, right? That's a big challenge, customers are, it's like, what do I do with all the data? How do I know? Well, I already told Chris we're going to dig in on the metadata, <laughs> yeah, the global right? metadata I'm namespace thing. That, that. that thing was, I'm like, you buried the lead in that. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. so that's one, yeah. right? We're here and you can see we're just, as a company, you know, zero in on that. And the other thing that was really interesting is, because you asked on-prem and cloud, right? What we've seen is, a lot of people want to cloudify their on-prem solution. And so they want to take all the greatness that's in the cloud and have that agility and the granularity and Kubernetes you know, in their private cloud. So that's another thing customers talk to us about. They say, how do you bring all those great things so we can leverage in the on-prem? And we're excited about the fact that our entire intelligence services is no longer just worry about one side. We think about you know, the entire environment. A third one I think we covered is security as always, right? Um, and the ransomware protection and the workload, uh, at the workload level. So I don't know if you know the data infrastructure inside had a workload security capability add into it. So not only we look at access, we look at anomalies of the workload. Suddenly, you know, something else changed then that could be indication. So we work the multi, we call it multi-layer defense, right? Secure storage and secure workload and working with some of the big you know, SIM vendors to make sure that whole remediation gets happened. And uh, super excited about we are here to help customers solve off the things that's top of mind for them. Yeah, because I, I think again, it brings it back together with the fact that uh, you know, the security aspect and there was the cyber resilience announcements that were made, and I, I think the, the time to remediation, time to detection, and being able to protect things, and what you're doing is, and I, I think you just said it is, and we were big supporters of this, is that a cloud operating model doesn't mean you're in a hyperscaler. It means that you're operating like a cloud provider in your own organization. Yes. Do you see that that's really pushing a lot of your roadmap these days and how you're, you're focusing on providing to your customers? Absolutely, because uh, you know, InstaCluster is a product that was actually born you know, to support customers in the cloud, and more and more of our customers want to say we love those, but we also want to do open source on-prem, so that's driving our roadmap priorities for InstaCluster. And uh, for data infrastructure inside, we already built in some of the Kubernetes uh, support because some of our big customers of OCI, they actually say, hey, what are we doing with Kubernetes containers? So that trend certainly is driving the focus. Uh, but on the other hand, we want to continue to support our unified data storage wherever they need to be. I don't know if uh, you know this, I spent 15 years in cybersecurity, so when you talk about cybersecurity, resilience is so close to my heart, and I'm very excited how we're bringing secure by design into our storage development, into how we think about monitoring, and uh, love every bits of that. So how did you make the transition? I mean, it's not necessarily a career transition, you're still in, in the same yeah. industry, of course, but what made you move into cloud operations? So I always say people ask, what are you interested in? I said there's an intersection of big data, you can put AI into that, cloud and security. So I see that as the intersection, you can work it from different angle, but is challenges you got to help people solve in security, in data explosion, in you know, how do you get more efficiency? You're just going at it from a different angle. I was going at it from a cybersecurity angle to help people secure cloud, secure operations, and here I'm trying to go from the angle of how do we bring better efficiency, and how do we, you know, there's a whole concept, security needs to shift left, so it's not an afterthought. I think getting the opportunity to work in a company on the infrastructure level where we can design security into it 
is a new and an adventure and a very rewarding one. Excellent. Kyan, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. You're always a ter terrific person to talk to about these topics. Thank you, thank you both. And thank you for s spending the time. And I can't believe you know so much history <laughs> oh, well, and I need I, to come and talk to you way about it. It, it makes me feel old because my hair wasn't gray back then, but then there's a whole bunch of other stories that go along with that. I shaved my head once for, uh, for St. Baldrick's yeah. and part of what I love about the community and it was, we started off today in the keynote with community is that, and I think you're seeing it and kind of emulating it is that people really at NetApp have that community feeling and we've been hearing yeah. it from the customers as well. So yeah. thank you for coming on. Yeah, I hope yeah. you're as excited as us on the evolution at NetApp, yeah. the evolution of intelligent services and our intelligent data infrastructure. Well, I look, I look forward to talking to you again because I think there's so much more in that cloud operating model to dig into, so we'll keep in touch. I'm in. Yeah. Thank, thank you so you. much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strachek. Keep it right here on theCUBE for more of NetApp Insight 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.